Hey everyone, welcome to Maker Fun Moments powered by Brilliant Labs. I'm so glad you're with us today. Did you know opossums are the only marsupials found in North America? Now you do. Today we're going to get creative with pine cones, we're going to fold some origami, and we're going to learn how to make oobleck. By the way, if you see a little icon popping up, it represents one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for the World. They're really important to us, and you can find out more on our website, brilliantlabs.ca. Let's get to it. Teaching origami is one of the few times that I will tell a student to strive for perfection. Because origami is easier the closer you get to exact folds. When you fold a piece of origami, you want to match up the edges as closely as possible before you begin your fold. Slide that pressure down to the center of the fold and tighten the fold outwards in both directions. Ideally, this will make a nice crisp fold that is able to be unfolded and refolded because sometimes you have to take a fold, unfold it, move something around, fold it back over. There are a lot of origami models that need that kind of undoing and redoing. And the more precise your folds are step by step, the easier the folds in the future will be. This butterfly has a fold where you're folding a whole bunch of layers of paper and that can be a little tough on smaller fingers, but it's worth it to try to get a nice tight fold because that's one of the folds that you're going to have to undo, turn inside out, and refold. I love this model because you can turn it into any kind of butterfly you like with a pair of scissors and some markers. Butterflies have so many varieties and they're the brightest and most ostentatious of the common insects we find here in Canada. And of course, butterflies have that extraordinary metamorphosis where they go from being an egg to a larva, usually a beautiful caterpillar. and then transform into what looks like an entirely different species. While they're doing it, while a butterfly is in its chrysalis, the entire body of the caterpillar breaks down and basically becomes caterpillar soup and then somehow rearranges itself, becomes a crumpled up sticky butterfly, becomes a crumpled up cramped butterfly, and then emerges completely transformed, completely altered. And one of the amazing things that scientists have discovered is that these butterflies retain certain memories from when they were caterpillars. They can be afraid of the same smells and they can be drawn to the same pheromones. It's a fascinating science and something we don't know nearly enough about. So I'm happy to bring you these thoughts on butterflies as we fold together. It's amazing what you can create with only a piece of paper. 
That's the real art of origami. You take something so simple, and with only your imagination, you can transform it into anything. Stay tuned for another great guest getting colorful with pine cones. everyone and welcome to another maker fun hour today is especially exciting because we're going to be doing something creative and mathematical we are going to be practicing our math skills with pine cones paints and paintbrushes my name is Sarah and today I have with me Lennon how old are you Lennon I'm seven Wow well this is gonna be really fun I just love walking along the forest and seeing all kinds of pine cones on the floor did you know that pine cones um, the, this, the little parts on pine cones are called scales and the top of the scales are called prickly. So you're saying that this whole pine cone is made up of all these scales and then prickles on top? Mm. Ha! Very cool! For you to join us with this activity at home, you only need a few things. You need a surface to paint on, maybe something that you can cover with paper or a plastic bag so that it doesn't get too messy because painting does get messy. You're going to need at least two colors of paint. The more the colors of paint, the better so that as you change your multipliers, you can see just how different it looks. But if you have two colors, you could just rotate through. You'll need paint brushes. If you have more than one paintbrush, that's great because you can keep one for each color. If you only have one, then you can use a cup of water to rinse it off in between. And then last but not least, what are we going to need? A pine cone. That's right. And if you don't live in the country and you live in the city, don't worry, you can still find pine cones. Pine cones can be found anywhere where there's conifer trees. In other words, pine-like trees, and you can find those in parks, walkways. You'd be surprised how many you can find, maybe in your backyard. So let's get our stuff together and get painting. For this project, we're going to be learning about different multipliers by first choosing a number to be our base number. Lennon and I chose two for our example. So we painted two of the scales in white, and then we times that by Exactly, and then we times two by two, we had four to paint in green. And then we kept going. We chose to use a really nice bright color of orange. And we took our four and we used another multiplier of two. And so we went two times four is eight. And then we painted eight scales in orange. And then we kept going until we painted all of our scales. Now it's not a big deal if you don't get everything perfect. The whole point is to have fun, do some art, be creative, and also be able to practice your math skills. All right, so we're ready to get painting, and we have a little X screen up in the top corner so that you can see Lennon as he works and paints. We've decided to each paint a pine cone, but follow the same amount of numbers. So for our base number, Lennon, what would you like to do? Two. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Let's grab a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take purple. Now, I am going to start with I like to start with light colors first and they get a little bit darker. So I'm going to paint two my base number at the top with white. What are you going to use? I'm going to use the biggest color. Orange. Orange is the biggest color. Okay. So why don't you hold it up here mm -hmm. and paint two on the top of that right there where everybody at home can see. And let's get painting. Now when I'm painting the scales, it's always good to try to get the outside and the inside so that as you paint more and more, you can kind of see what you've already painted. Oh wow, that looks good. That might be a few more than two, but it certainly is pretty. So you paint like that and I'll paint my two. And then I'm gonna put this brush back and I'm gonna get a new one. Now we have our base number of two. What should we use as our multiplier, Lennon? My bike. Two times two. So you want to do two times two? Okay, so what is two times two? Four. Okay, <laughs> let's do four more scales. So like I said, if we could paint the outside of the scales first 
and then the inside, that's the best. But if you have a particularly small pie code, it might be tricky to do that. Just do the best you can because again, we're doing art and we're practicing math, but nothing is perfect here. And mistakes in art sometimes turn out to be really beautiful. All right, so I've painted one, two, three, four. Looking good, looking good. Oh, I like the white and the green together. I'll put that back and grab a new paintbrush. All right, so we chose our base number as two. I painted mine in white and Lennon started off with orange. He got off a little track with painting more than two, but that's okay. And then we chose our second multiplier as two. So two times two is? Four. Exactly, so I painted four, or, the, or at least best I could, of green pine cone scales. Now, as we keep going and we keep multiplying, the number of scales that we are painting gets bigger and bigger. I'm gonna to choose to do orange in mine next, and I'm going to say, okay, I have four. What's my next multiplier? Two times four. Okay, two times four. Well, we know what that is, isn't it? Hey. Exactly. So this time I'm gonna use the orange. I'm gonna paint eight scales in orange. And it's starting to look really beautiful here. All right, Lennon, we're really getting along here. Your pine cone is getting pretty colorful. Um, I'm trying to stick to the math, but that's okay. So we had our base number of two, two in white, and then Lennon chose the multiplier of two. So we did two times two is? And then we chose to do another multiplier of two. So two times four is? So I painted eight uh, scales in orange and then Lennon decided to just get really creative with his but that's okay because he's doing the math and he's getting it down pat so we're gonna stop here because we know that you can keep going with your math and you can always start with smaller numbers too if you're just learning um, and a really nice thing is is that once you're done with our example pine cone here you can turn it upside down and add a ribbon and hang it as an ornament and maybe you can give it to somebody and when you give it to somebody you can talk to them about how you made it with math you can also talk to them about how important pine cones are to our ecosystem because every little scale of this pine cone falls off to become a seed so everyone could possibly turn into a new pine tree and Lennon didn't you have a neat fact about pine cones and how long they stay on a tree before they fall off yes they can stay on the tree for 10 years and maybe even a century before they fall off. <laughs> well, I don't know about a century, but that's true. So the bigger the pine cone is, so we have some really big ones, but I, we find little ones too, and that's based on what tree it is. They can stay on a tree for up to 10 years before they fall off, and that's pretty cool. I wonder how old our pine cones are, and I wonder how old your pine cones are. And if you would like to share your project with us, we would love to have you share it. You can follow the links on the TV to share it through social media, or you can ma mail it to us with regular mail, maybe a picture. We're so happy that you joined us today, and we wanted to remind you to always stay brilliant. Stay brilliant, everybody! Thanks again, and we can't wait to do another activity with you. A special guest is going to show us how to make oobleck. Take it away, Gracie.
everybody, Gracie here. Welcome to our maker studio where we are always creating and making something. Today I wanted to share with you how to make some oobleck. I have always loved making slime and I've learned how to make a lot of different types in the last few years. So much that I even have my own slime making kit at home. Oobleck is always a fun one to make because it is simple and super fun to play with afterwards. Also, after you're done, it's really easy to wash your hands. So what is oobleck, you might ask? Oobleck is what they call a non-Newtonian fluid. That's a fancy way of saying it's a liquid that doesn't always act the way you expect a liquid to act. It kind of reminds me of quicksand, which can trap animals that live on land. Oobleck isn't the only non-Newtonian fluid. Believe it or not, mayonnaise, peanut butter, honey, ketchup, and even paint are also non-Newtonian. This is because they act differently based on how you interact with them. For this activity, we will need cornstarch and water. The tools we'll be using are food coloring, this measuring cup, it has to be one cup, spatula for mixing, a cloth because cornstarch is very messy, and a bowl to mix it all in. Now I will measure my two cups of cornstarch. This is what one cup is like, like straight up to the top. We'll just put it in here. Okay, we gotta go really close to the bowl because it's very messy. And we'll come back with the second one. Oopsies. Okay, and now we will add one cup of water because we added two cups of cornstarch. Whatever recipe you're using, always use half the amount of water. So here we go. That looks like a cup. We'll put a little more just because it's not all the way. So just a little more. That looks enough. And then we will stir. This part is extremely hard, so we will be right back. I'm trying to mix it, but it's a little hard for children to mix it, so we'll get some adult help. So I got some help to start out mixing it, and now I'm gonna get my hands in there and really mix it. Oh, that's weird. It's almost done. There's still some clumps. Oh, I got some there. Feels so weird. It's like, it's like hard, but then it goes like soft. But sometimes it's hard and soft at the same time. And then you just go like that and it just comes off your hands. Look, it's not even, but then when you go like this, you just sink right through. It's so weird. By the way, I do not recommend putting stuff in oobleck and trying to find it again. I once put a seashell in there and I couldn't find it. It wasn't a real seashell, it was a mini one, but still, don't put stuff in there. <laughs> After you finish mixing it, I'm going to go wash my hands just so I don't get it all over the food coloring using this. I was originally going to go wash my hands with the tap and then I remembered. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to wash my hands in the extra water. See, they're all clean. I barely even, I didn't even use any soap. And then we use a towel. This is not in the, like, ingredients <laughs> list, but it will come in handy. Next up, we are going to add our coloring. Um, so I think we're gonna add about one drop. Oof, there we go. It ain't coming out. It isn't. What? It isn't. Check the inside to make sure it's not clogged. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Be careful with this part. Careful. I don't want to get dye on my hands. I'm good. Make sure it's closed all the way. You don't want any dye coming out. Like that. And then you go. Come on. There we go. Drop. 
Okay, what should we use to mix? Spoochla. <laughs> you go like really like light because you want to really mix. Whoa! What happens if you go fast? This. It won't mix, right? It goes slow, so it is liquid. Okay, the reason I'm going slow is because it's getting like really liquidy when you go slow. But let's say you try to mix while you're going fast. And let's say you're trying to get it in really fast. That's the problem. You can't, you can only mix like the surface and that's pretty useless. So you have to go in there really slow. So it's literally like you're going inside like a, like a container of water. And you just go as slow as you can. We're just gonna get in here with our hands now that we've <laughs> mixed it enough. I'm trying to get in there. Ah! You can like really get it in there, like in your hand. And then you just like let it go when it goes. Darn it, not again. It's like slime. I think it's all mixed except that one part. Oh, there's a bunch of white underneath. Let's just really mix it. You can hide stuff in here. It's hard to get out, but you can. Ready? Oh, thank gosh, it's not gone forever. Next step, we have... Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remind me that there's eight for when I'm getting them out. And then you just attempt to find them, I guess. Oh. Throw them in there just so they can. Ah, it's so hard to get them. Or you can just go like this and it'll just show up. Then you just toss it in there. Grab a giant handful. Does there anything in there? Nope. Oh, it's hardening on me. I've only found two. <laughs> okay, that's a big piece. So if there's nothing in here. Ah. Nothing? Are you, are you serious? No. Another huge piece. Oh, there's something in there! Wait till it all runs out of my fingers. Just gonna keep going. Oh, that's my thumb, not a bead. Ow. I grabbed my thumb thinking it was a bead. When you're done with this, I'm just gonna do one more just to try to find any more. Come on, just show yourself. I gotta find one more. Oh, is that one? No. Don't drop it. <laughs> okay, now let that run through my fingers. After you're done. <laughs> I'm gonna wash my hands in this water again. Like that. Dry them. 
towel. <laughs> After you're done drying your hands, and you think you're done playing with it for the day, grab the lid. Go away. Oh, it's this lid, remember? Oh, am I doing it? Nope, I'm not doing it. Let's just pretend this is... No, wait, I think it is. I think I got it. Yep. Yep. Anyways, so after you have it here, you can just preserve it in a... Like a fridge and... It'll be ready for the next day or whenever you want to play with it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining me, everyone, and don't forget to stay brilliant. I hope you had fun today. I know we did, and I'm looking forward to next time. What was your favorite part? Share with us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Find all our social media, Brilliant Labs, Labo Creative. Stay brilliant. We'll see you next time.